We are coming to you from the city beautiful Chicago, Illinois, where tonight WGN Sports on the U presents White Sox Baseball. It's Jose Abreu, Adam meeting in the Sox as they get set to butt heads with Dustin Pedroia, A.J. Perzinski, David Ortiz, and the Boston Red Sox. Hi, everybody, and welcome. With Steve Stone, I'm Ken Harrelson as we get set to bring you game two of this three-game set. If you missed the opener last night, it was a long, drawn-out affair, about three hours and 40 minutes. We got to the bottom of the ninth inning. All of a sudden, it was an error by the shortstop. Ramirez scores from second base. We won it 2-1. to one. But tonight on the bump for us, a man coming off a very strong effort. Last time out, John Danks was the John Danks of old. He was cutting that ball into the right-hand hitters and tying him up, throwing a very good straight change away. He's 1-0 this year. His ERA 415. John looks like he's back to normal. He's further away from that surgery that limited his effectiveness last year when he went 4-14. and This year it's a different John Danks. And they're looking for 200 innings out of him. But against the Red Sox career-wise, not too good. 3-6 and six with a 537 ERA. Hopefully he can reverse that tonight. Well, one of the best players in the game is their second baseman, Dustin Pedroia. He was not in the lineup last night, but he's there this evening. He took a quarter zone shot in his wrist, and he got it being broken up a double play at second base. So you have the leader of this team back in the lineup and at the top. Pedroia not off to a good start this year, hitting 236. He has one run driven in. However, he's a catalyst for this ball club. They feel comfortable with him in the one spot. He's there tonight, career against our Sox. Up close to 300, you can see he's very, very talented. And you can't throw him too many high fastballs because those wind up in the outfield. Everything is a high fastball to him. So sit back, relax, and strap it down. White Sox baseball coming your way. Field. Last night's bottom of the ninth victory over Boston made for an exciting finish, but lost in the mix was the excellent performance by starter Eric Johnson. Robin Ventura noticed a difference from the two previous starts by Johnson. It just came out of his hand. I think last night it was just crisper, and I don't know if it was weather or anything like that. I guess sometimes guys like pitching in the cold weather and, and just let it go, but uh, it, it, it just looked like he had some zip on it with you know, a good curveball when he needed it. Um, a movement that he needed to hit hit the corner. So, you know, that, that stuff's always important, I think, just for his own mindset of when he goes out there. 
but you can keep it down in the zone and, and sink it and um, you know get guys rolling over on it and, and being able to throw a curveball just to keep them off that so um, you know he, he has a lot of uh, different things he can do if, if he's you know if he's sharp like that we'll be back with lineups and tonight's first pitch after a break High Definition is brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Tonight's game is available in Spanish on your SAP audio setting, provided by 97.5 FM ESPN Deportes, Chicago's first and only Spanish-language sports radio station. Another cool night at the ballpark, although a whole lot better than last night, as John Farrell has seen his Boston Red Sox sink to the cellar in the east. They're 5-9 and nine in last place by three full games. But they've been banged up and hoping to get some of their players back. They get Dustin Pedroia back for tonight's game. And Robin Ventura, well, he just likes what he sees of this ball club. You win two games in a row in walk-off fashion in the ninth inning. You're doing pretty well. And he believes that this team, not only offensively, but he probably sees the bullpen starting to come together a bit. And a terrific job last night by Eric Johnson. So let's take a look at how John Farrell is going to line up his Boston Red Sox tonight. Dustin Pedroia. Leading off playing second base, Senate Xander Bogarts, David Ortiz, the designated hitter with Johnny Gomes, Grady Sizemore, A.J. Pierzynski catching, Daniel Navas at first base, Ryan Roberts and Jack and Jackie Bradley Jr. rounded out. The defense and now that lineup behind John Danks, left to right, Alejandro Diaz, Adam Eaton, and Diane Vizieto in the outfield. Connor Gillespie. Alexi Ramirez with a 14-game hitting streak to start the season is a shortstop with Marcus Simeon and Jose Abreu. Adrian Nieto, the switch-hitting catcher, is going to get the nod behind the plate. And Johnny Danks on the hill. He's 1-0 this year. This is his third start. Opponents hitting a pretty good 239. And the cutter and the straight change have been much improved over last year as he feels 100%. The umpires for the game tonight, Corey Blazer behind the plate, the crew chief, Jim Joyce is at first, Doug Eddings is at second, and Marvin Hudson is at third. Ramirez, who's a lifetime 245 hitter in the month of April, has seen his batting average skyrocket. He's driven in 12 runs, hit three home runs, and comes in hitting 415. So a wonderful start to the season for Alexi. He has contributed certainly with a couple of late game heroics. And defensively, he seems to be getting better at shortstop. So they're throwing the ball around the infield, which means that we are ready to play baseball. Temperature in the mid 40s, trending upwards. And I'm ready to turn it over to my play by play partner, Ken Harrelson. All right, Stevie, thank you very much. And trending where? Upwards. It's going to be, oh, it's going to be 60, 70 before the game's over. Your what hurts? Depending if it ends on Saturday. And once again, good evening, everyone, and welcome to White Sox Baseball right here with WGN Sports on the U. So happy you could join us as the first pitch of the ball game to Dustin Pedroia is taken. Ball one. 
Pedroia, who missed last night's action, comes in hitting at 236. And he is a heart and soul of this ball club. This little man is some kind of player. There's a strike. Talked to him before the game, and he took that cortisone shot in his wrist. He hurt the wrist, getting taken out at second base on a double play, but he said, and he was quick to add, that it was a clean slide. Nothing dirty about the play. Outfield straight up, about equidistant. That fastball pretty much down the middle. He threw it right by him. Sox won it last night, two to one. Bottom of the ninth inning, in case you did not see that ball game. Yeah. Eric Johnson was just outstanding, as was Jake Peavy. Another souvenir right side here at the ballpark 330 down the left field line 335 down the right field line 375 in the gaps and 400 straight away center. There's a look at one of the heroes of last night Eric Johnson. Talking to a few scouts before the game today they said they've never seen him even close to as good as he was last evening. And they particularly remarked on the rotation of the curveball and the hard slider he threw. As that ball hit hard down into the corner. So the fastball, he's a good high fastball hitter. He got one up and in, and he didn't miss it. Picks up his fourth two-bagger of the season. This is why they love having Pedroia in the lineup. He turns on that high fastball. John tried to get it inside. Couldn't get it there. And an ominous way to start this first inning. So here's Xander Bogart. 0 for 4 last night. Comes in hitting at 260. And Xander, just 21 years old. He's got a job to do. These two clubs met six times last year with Carmine's winning four of them. That evens accounted one. John's going to try everything he's got, including cutting the ball inside to get Bogarts to hit the ball to the left side. But Ramirez is playing up the middle. There's a huge hole on the left side of the infield. He tries to go the other way. He does, but it's foul. Three and six lifetime against Boston. Turns that over and misses low and away. When the sports writers w went to Bogarts after the play that lost the ball game, that throw in the dirt last night, he said, I'll learn from that. He said, I should have hit him chest high. It was my fault. A bad mistake, he goes, but I'm going to use it as a learning experience. That'll get the job done and more. So Pedroia will score and it's one nothing Red Sox. First run batted in of the year for Bogarts. That's a change up. Not a bad pitch. But with Bogarts trying to go to the right side. It hits the mound. Sneaks past Simeon. That'll bring up. Ortiz hitting at 241, a couple of homers. He's driven in eight. David 0 for 4 last evening. Hook couldn't do anything with it.
the usual shift in the infield but this time. Marcus Simeon is not way out on the grass. He is still on the dirt part of the infield. And that's into left field. So. Bogarts will pull up at second. For those of you who were not with us last night. Mike Napoli their talented first baseman and slugger in the middle of their lineup. Dislocated the ring finger of his left hand. But. That's the bad news. The good news is they don't feel they have to disable him. He's got his hand in a splint. Finger splinted. And they expect him to be back in the not too distant future. They said he's a very tough guy. And he caught a break could have been a torn ligament could have been a fracture was neither. And so on a banged up ball club he joins the ranks. Well the ligaments the one you wanted to stay away from. What he did last night. Now that we know the ligament is not torn. Well, there's a tear there. What he did last night really is just not that much. He had a few days they figure and then. Back in the middle gives a much better job at first base. He's terrific defensively and he's got big power. Johnny Gomes. One and one to count. Gomes three for 11 lifetime off Danks. With a homer. Nobody out, two on, one in. You're in the top of the first if you're just joining us. That's into short right field. Thanks coming on. He's there, makes the catch. And that's out number one. Looks like the wind, which is fairly consistent tonight, blowing out to the left field corner, knocked that ball down somewhat. So here's Grady Sizemore. They're hitting at 308, a couple of homers, he's driven in four. Took to Carlo last night in four at bats. And he's faced Danks 21 times, has three hits, all of which stayed in the park. There's a strike. So the count one and one. This Red Sox team is not a running bunch. They've swiped four bases. They've been caught four times and all things being equal. Bradley will go. But that's about it. Good one. Well there was a time that Sizemore could steal a base for you. He's got one stolen bag. Coming back, he hasn't played in two years. I think a lot of the people with the Red Sox were surprised that he hadn't lost much with the bat. They were also surprised. They thought he would be a little bit better in the outfield, but he's not a left fielder. He's a center fielder. That's in the right field. Thanks a long way to go. Can he get there? Yes, he will. Now the throw to second base. He's safe, but nice catch by Vecchio. Two down. Luciano has made two big efforts coming in on Gomes this time moving toward the line on Sizemore. That's a fair ball by a couple of feet. He went a long way to get that one with the wind moving it away from him and then just missed the double play at second. So here is Pierzynski. AJ over two last night comes in hitting at 297 with a homer. And he's driven in four.
Watch out. Boy, he got sawed off right there, so Gillespie will throw him out. But the leadoff double by Pedroia, the single by Bogarts. After happening a play, it's the Red Sox one, and our guys coming to bat. Then it's Marcus Simeon, Connor Gillespie, Jose Abreu, Adam Dunn, the DH, and he's been hot. And Viciedo Diaz, Ramirez, who's been all everything, and Adrian Nieto with the nod behind the plate. The defense and out of the lineup behind the slow working Clay Buck Holtz. Left to right, Sizemore, Bradley, and Gomes in the outfield with Roberts, Bogarts, Pedroia, and Nava in the infield. A.J. Pierzynski behind the plate. And Clay Buck Holtz on the hill. As you can see in two starts he hasn't been all that good opponents hitting 408. Gone is the big fastball. Highest he's been time this year is 93. That was only on occasion. He's been throwing in the high 80s. He does have. A very good straight change. And when he's right. He's got an outstanding curveball. Very seldom throws anything straight. It's always moving. He's got a wonderful arm. Great command. Juan Nieves couldn't say enough complimentary things about Buck Holtz, but he says he's not quite back yet 100%. And before we show you our picks to click you at home, select yours. There's first pitch strike to Adam. Adam comes in at 321, a homer. He's driven in nine. Sox come in hitting at 276 as a club with a 5.15 team ERA. Quickly, 0 and 2. Ball and two strikes. Buck Holtz, a product of the Boston system, drafted in the supplemental round after the first round, 42nd pick overall in 2005. There you look at the career numbers, and they're very impressive. His best year by far, 2010, went 17 and 7 with a 2.33 ERA and 28 starts. Last couple of years, he has had some physical problems that's curtailed him. And that hit him. He didn't want to do that. That's where that fastball inside, and like a lot of good leadoff hitters, when you got a padded elbow, you don't mind taking one right there. It's not that he leaned into it, it's just that he didn't get out of the way of it. That's a Fernando Vina move. He couldn't go inside on him. Yeah, he could. He hit, hit him. him every time he'd hit him. So here's Marcus, the 214. 
couple of homers. He's driven in five. Ball gets away. And now he will pull up at second. And a good thing he did. As Nava made a nice throw to third. It's E3, and that'll tell you the difference between having Napoli over there and having an outfielder in Nava. Well, now Marcus has a job to do. Tries to, but that's going to be in the seats for a souvenir. Colts, 29 years old, 6'3, 190, out of Texas. And Marcus trying to move it once again over there. Breaking ball pops him up in the left. That's not going to get it done. So with one out, let's check out our picks to click tonight. Jim and Joe, our director and the crew, they went with Gaza. Steve's going with Adam Eaton. And Joe Mazza, father of Mike. Joe, 39 years old and holy. Actually, 74, but Joe, happy birthday, buddy. As here is Gillespie. Connor hitting a 311, no homers, nine RBIs. Talking with Juan Nieves about Clay Buckholz, he said he's probably the fastest runner on the team. So just a tremendous athlete, a good hitter, swings from the left side. Of course, as a member of the Red Sox, you don't get a chance to do that too often except in interleague play. 0 oh and 2 the count. There's a look at Juan, who is a fine pitching coach. Got a break. He was excellent over here, but he certainly has done a great job over there. A lot of talent to work with. And in his first year as a pitching coach, his team wins the World Series. That's not too bad. Couldn't happen to a nicer person. No, he's the best. Ball gets away, but not far enough as AJ able to keep it in the vicinity. So the count one and two. Yeah. 
and evens it two. Well, they have been some pitchers who could run in the past. But it's unusual that a pitcher be the fastest guy on the team. They said that he's actually a burner. There was a guy that pitched back in the 60s. Cleveland. Yankees. Pedro Ramos. And that's foul, and that's going to be out of play. And they, a lot of people said that Pedro, if he raced Mickey Mantle, they would bet on Pedro. Which that's, is that's, which that's is pretty big. Yeah, that's really fast. That's pretty good. I'm afraid I'd have to go with number seven. Come on, Connor. Pick him up. We need it. Let's get this thing tied up quickly. Two down. Throws him a straight change, and this ball drifts away. And occasionally when he gets ahead of hitters, Buck Holtz will throw a straight change, but split his fingers well apart, and it actually becomes a pretty good splitter. But he'll only throw that as a wipeout pitch and only on occasion. You don't hear that. You're one of the few guys that still use that term. And it's so apropos. You very seldom hear the get ahead pitch or the wipeout pitch. Very seldom ever hear that anymore, and that was just common parlance, so to speak. Yeah. Well, you, you usually have two types of curveballs: one you want to throw for a strike, and the other, when you're ahead, that you want to look like a strike yeah. until it just drops in the dirt or at the shoot tops. Yeah, well, a lot of guys who used to throw the spitter, and there were a lot of them. Make no mistake about that. They had for the post, the guys who had the good ones. They had one that they would use to get ahead, and then they had one. It would wipe you out. They had one that, like a shoe top drop. The guy has to have overwhelming stuff to get you to miss pitches in the strike zone. And very few pitchers have that kind of stuff. So if they're going to stay in the strike zone, the hitters are going to make contact. But the way that those pitchers compensate is they don't throw a strike too often. Jake last night threw a lot of pitches out of the zone and got a lot of our hitters. That ball hit one hopper down the third long peg is low and it gets by him and we're going to tie this game up. So Ryan Roberts with the throwing area era. Sage the ninth inning last evening. It's no run batted in. It's E5. And he's got plenty of time just throws it into the dirt. And this one just eats up Nav at first base. So we've seen a couple of instances. Not saying that Napoli would have necessarily made that pick, but he certainly would have knocked it down and saved the run. Here's Adam. Make him really pay, Adam. Adam last night was one for one with three walks. That one hit was a homer. Off his best buddy, Jake Peavy. Jacks it up. This was the only run that we had for quite some time. As Jake tried to get that ball in. Didn't quite get it there to the big man. He homered in the second inning with one out and nobody on. He just muscled it out of here. He didn't come close to getting it all.
That was a good stop by AJ as that ball bounced well in front of him. He was able to corral it and make sure that Abreu couldn't go to third. Well, when you get a guy like Buckholz, he's tough for a catcher because everything, as we talked about, everything moves. And you know, he's going to throw the ball in the dirt a lot. So that error is going to cost Buckholz some more pitches. We have one in to tie the game at one. There are two out, two on, and we have yet to get a hit. Last year, Buckholz went 12 and one with a 174 ERA, and then making an off-balance throw from underneath, he felt something tweak in his shoulder, and that really curtailed his year. Now he came back through the World Series. But it was never quite the same. Tanks take strike one. Tanks two for four last night, but against Buckholz, he's faced it six times and he has drawn the collar. There's a shot foul. Seattle getting his opportunity to play most every day now. Has looked better and better. He's hitting the ball harder. He's using the whole field. If he was just a right handed counterpart to a platoon system, he wouldn't be getting a whole lot of at bats. This for him is a very, very good break. That was a hanging breaking ball yeah, up in his he had eyes. A cookie right there. <laughs> But Colts would like you to get away with that. Take a look at the location on Xfinity pitch tracks. A hanging curveball, man, right there. Good riff at that one. There's a shot into the seats. So with the two errors, that has, as we just mentioned, cost Buckholz a lot of extra pitches. Two two pitch. There's a base hit in the right field. Now they're going to have to hold it, but he's going through it. No, he'll hold up. And a good thing he did. Johnny Gomes made a good throw. That ball was scalded in the right field, so it got to Gomes pretty quickly. He didn't have to move a great deal, and because of that. 
There was no way Abreu could have scored. He thought about it, but a one hop rocket. Gomes sets up and puts this ball right on the money. I like the fact that he wanted to score right there. A lot of guys will the ball hit that hard. You know where your outfielders were. Just coast into third, pull up. Which is never a good thing to do. Well, the outfield bobbles the ball. Yeah. Or the throw is offline. You still have a shot to score if your momentum is going forward. So that's the first hit of the inning. And here's the answer. Curveball's high. Alejandro 0 for 3 last night and 2 for 7 lifetime off Buckles. Ate him up inside. Though we get a gift, we come up with one and tied after one. One one tie here in the top of the second. It'll be Nava, Roberts, and Bradley Jr. Nava takes first pitch strike. Red Sox like to play Nava in a platoon system with Johnny Gomes. That's because, as we saw last night, he's a much better hitter from the left side than from the right. Yeah, he's one of three switch hitters the Red Sox have on their roster. That home run he hit last night was a bomb. So that is out number one and season tickets for our socks are available at low prices purchase a season ticket plan and gain access to the best seats at the best price with the most benefits. So white or 
three one two six seven four one thousand. Here's Roberts. Ryan 0 for 3 last evening. Takes it just off the plate. Change up. If that cutter's working, that straight change will be working, and John. Most of this year has had both of them working. Doubled him up. I don't see any reason why not to throw the next one. But we'll see what Adrian wants. See if he wants to cut her in. Roberts has not reacted well to either of the changes. As long as he. Keeps it where he threw those first two. He's in pretty good shape. Close pitch, good pitch, didn't get it. Had him struck out. This pitch is right there. And I think Adrian mentioned to Corey Blazer it's a pretty decent pitch. He gone. Four strikes, he had. And two down. He goes back to the fastball, but keeps it a bit higher than Roberts wants it. You can always watch the bunt with Bradley, especially lefty to lefty. He does have very good speed. Jackie was 0 for 2 last night. Two balls, two strikes, two out here in the top of the second. And this game tied at one. There you go. After an inning and a half, they have one and we have one.
along with Robin Ventura by visiting WGN.com and click on the Game Zone banner for an updated stats and information package. Game Zone is powered by St. Xavier University. Tradition, innovation, this is where they meet. Ramirez, Nieto, and back to the top of the order with Adam Eaton. Alexei in the center field. Can of corn. So one pitch went out, and Sox fans come out for La Noche de la Familia. A special family night for our Latino fans on Saturday, April 26th. Our very own Latin legend, Minnie Minoso, will be honored with a replica statue giveaway, which the first 20,000 fans in attendance will receive. So whitesox.com slash familia for tickets. Here's Nieto. Four-year-old switch hitting catcher takes high and away. Adrian is relishing his opportunity to. Play in the big leagues, never dreaming as a Class A player with the Washington Nationals that he would play in the major leagues this year. But as a Rule 5 draft, if you draft a major league, which the Sox had to do because he was protected up to Triple A by the Nationals, if he doesn't stick with the big ball club, then you have to offer him back. And there is no doubt in the minds of our front office that Mike Rizzo, the GM of the Nationals, would have gladly taken him back in their organization for half the price. Pass then to short center field and a fall for base hit. Well, he's a good looking young player. I mean, you know, switch hitting catcher. He had an impressive spring. If you didn't know who he was, you'd never thought that he was coming straight from eight ball. No, and it's so rare to find a switch hitting catcher these days. He's got a pretty decent arm. He's done a terrific job when you consider he never had above a ball experience. I think for him. This is probably the greatest break that he's had. And he's making the most of it. Here's Adam. He was hit by a pitch and came around to score. Curve ball strike. Huge gap out there in right center. Adam's job as a leadoff hitter is plain and simple score runs. Get on, you're a table setter, not the man who's going to drive in that many, although nine is a good number at this part of the year, but he's got 15 runs driven in. Next highest on the team, Alexi Ramirez with 12. 15 runs scored. Ground ball, short stop. They go to the draw. They can't get him at first. But there's two gone. Leading the league or tied for the lead with Brian Dozier of Minnesota. And of course, Alexei leading the league in hitting with that 415 average. Ray you tied for third in home runs. 
Abreu second with 14 RBIs. Alexei tied for third with 12. Watch out. Marcus hit a get a curveball and hit it into left field. Or a pop up. Chops that one foul. And the count one and two. This would be a good pitch to run. Adam, Adam is not getting a particularly big lead at first base. Sometimes at one and two, you like to bail your hitter out. If he sweeps that breaking ball in the dirt, he can't get him at second. There he goes. Chops that one foul. One out of two, and that steal was of third base. The successful one. Bakes. And there's a base hit in the center field. So with two out, two on. That'll bring up Gillespie. Marcus picked on a high fastball and drove it in the center. That's the best fastball as far as velocity that Buck Holtz has thrown tonight. He stopped out at 92. He used to be 95 96. So he's still not entirely back. Juan Nieves rates him about 85% of what he feels he will be as this season moves along. Garner struck out on a fastball. Takes a breaking ball strike. One three and two for them. One three and zero oh for us here in the bottom of the second. That back and that'll be out of play. Ate him up right there. High tight fastball out of the strike zone. There wasn't anything that Connor could do with it. So through an inning and two thirds, he has thrown a lot of pitches. Same way last night with Jake, only. Then he got command and took the game into the seventh inning. Well, that third inning bailed him out. Real easy third. Five pitches. Two big gaps out there as they are really spread out. And once again, the O2.
it would appear that AJ got crossed up on that pitch. Not even a two. Little cutter on the inside corner, but he got it too far in. There is a look at his pitching coach, Juan Nieves, charting each and every pitch, and there's been a bunch of them so far. Get me over type curveball right there. Buckles. Well, when he first came up, we were reading a story that said this young man is capable of throwing no hitter anytime he walks out there. He can do just about everything with the baseball, make it move any which way. But the velocity yet has not come back to him, the velocity he had early last year. Got him. So another inning of opportunity gone by the boards. One one tie here in the top of the third inning. First pitch strike to Pedroia, who doubled and scored, leading off the ball game. Last year, Pedroy hit just nine home runs, although he managed to hit 301. Now he tore a ligament in his thumb and didn't tell anybody. He just kept playing with it. Played 160 games. Finally, it came out after a couple months of the season that he was playing through a torn ligament. He was actually aggravated because he made a point not to tell anybody and he just took the decreased power. The ball hit hard, but we got a man there. 
Well, for me as a baseball fan, if I were traveling in a town that Dustin Pedroia or the Red Sox were playing, I would pay to go watch him play. I love to watch that little guy play. They drafted him out of Arizona State in the second round, despite the fact, well, they list him at 5'8. He's probably a little shorter than that. But he is some player. They love him defensively, they love the hustle. And along with Big Poppy, they're the two leaders of this team. Well, Pedroia is, he's the guy that really is the heart and soul of the club. He leads, as you mentioned, playing with a torn ligament and thumb. As the count one and one to Bogarts. Big Poppy has been fantastic for that ball club. I mean, absolutely fantastic. One of the great clutch hitters in the last 50 years. Well, when nobody in the World Series hit over 250, Big Poppy hit 688. And he got him. So Xander is hit. John tried to cut that fastball inside and got a little bit of the uniform. That's something you want to do ahead of Ortiz, but that's what he's stuck with. Big Poppy lined a single in the left field. Take strike one. Look at the play by Abreu Mercy. Well, he's safe a second, but what a play by Abreu on a rocket off the bat. Of Ortiz. He did it the best way he could because he's right there on the bag, making a good solid throw to try to get an angle, but Bogart's got good speed. And he's able to slide away as in the shift, it's Connor Gillespie covering second base. Big effort by Abreu and almost doubled him up. What a play by Jose. Wow. So here's Gomes. The well, Ortiz. That's the best one-two punch I've ever seen in my career. In this game. Manny Ortiz Ramirez. and Manny Ramirez. And I played against Madeline Maris. And I've seen some other great one-two punches. But I've never seen anything better than Ortiz and Ramirez. Well, you could kind of count on 250, 260 combined runs batted in. That old song, the right one don't get you, then the left one will. <laughs> Certainly held true in that case. Uh huh. Johnny's been a little vocal in his desire to play just about every day. But his manager John Farrell believes that. That platoon system with Nava hitting from the left side platooning with Gomes. Is best for the ball club. Well. As time is called. That's good that you want to see guys who want to play every day. If you didn't want to do that. Your love of the game wouldn't be there. I mean every one of these guys played every day to get to the major leagues. They anticipate playing every day here but the reality is. Sometimes that left handed counterpart is a little bit tougher on right hand pitchers than you are. Well, again, it goes back to the individual. Each, each and every one is different. And you got some guys that, as you know, had right handed hitters that rather play against right handed pitching than left handers. And vice versa. You got some left handed hitters. These now, these are few and far between, but I remember Keith Hernandez when he tied for the MVP and won the batting championship. He said he'd rather hit off left handers. That was a perfect strike three that was not called. So Gomes gets a break. Watch where it shows up on Xfinity pitch tracks.
So he had him struck out and he walks him. This went a little lower than the pitch before, but still taking part of the zone, but not to be. So Corey Blazer does not call the low pitch for either pitcher tonight. It's no big deal. The difference between the two is John has to get that call because of the straight change being down there, and Bug Colts will throw a lot of high fastballs. So here's Sizemore. He fouled out to Viciato, who was playing right field tonight. If you just joined us, good play by Tank. As that breaking ball high. That one foul. Houston Astros called up their number two prospect, George Springer. And we play Houston in the not too distant future. We're going to see the young man who is one for two in his major league debut tonight. Two and one with two on two out. Pitch number fifty seven on the way. Buck Oaks will have a whole lot more when he gets through the third inning. Get foul. It will. That is what you call a hanging changeup. Last thing you want is a belt high change, especially on the inner portion of the plate. You want it as a hitter. That's so good when you let it go and you see it just staying right there. Fell back. Well, we talk about when you make an error, it causes the pitcher a lot more pitches sometimes. And sometimes on the umpire, where you get a guy struck out and the umpire won't call it, it causes a lot more pitches. It does that, and John is trying to wind his rate through the third. Brady Sizemore missed two full seasons, did not play in 12 or 13. Got another cookie right there. Didn't do anything with it. Well, when well, you miss two full seasons, and then you come back and try to make a big league ball club on a courtesy call, so to speak, they give you. Pretty rare that that happened. Yes. Pretty rare. Yes. Brady was disabled a couple of times in 2009, the final time after left elbow surgery. Then disabled once in 2010. He had 
microfracture surgery on his left knee. Disabled three times in 11 and once in 2012. That was to have lower back surgery. So he's no stranger to the scalpel. Well, Minnesota had a guy they gave a chance to Bartlett. He made the club and then he retired. Oh, there you go. So there again, he had Gomes struck out. Blazer wouldn't call it. And now they got the bases loaded. And here comes AJ. And here comes Coop. They're trying to settle Danks down because he's upset with a home plate umpire. I don't blame him. Well, it could very well be that Don will spend enough time on the mound so that Corey Blazer will have to go out and break it up, and he'll just casually mention there were a couple pitches that were pretty close. So Don is indeed spending the time. I'm not sure what Corey is still doing out there. I don't know. Uh, what's he doing still out there? He's the one that blew the pit, the call. <laughs> so here's AJ. He shattered his bat, grounded out to Gillespie a third. Curveball high. Fairly decent speed on the base paths. Career with the bases loaded, very impressive. Seven grand slams and a 349 batting average. Major League record in games caught. Consecutive game, not consecutive, but games caught in a season. There's a strike. And the count one and two. You don't want to go full. You don't want him. Give him a chance to miss a no. You also don't want those base runners moving with two outs. Better off keeping the force out in order. And making it happen on this pitch. Ate him up again. And he's going to pitch out of it. He had to throw a lot of extra pitches because of that. Meanwhile. We'll go to the bottom of the third tied at one.
Tom, sponsored by Jeff Vukovic. He's your local nationwide agent who's served the area for over 36 years. To visit, excuse me, to visit the nation, visit jeffvuk.com. Nationwide is on your side. It's a good baseball name, Jeff Vukovic. There's been a few Vukovic's played yeah, there in the league. Cy Young Award winner Pete, Pete. Vukovic. Yeah. He's been a scout all these years. Pete has. I used to love to watch him pitch. He and guys like Chris Bazio go out there with absolutely nothing and keep the first thing you know, a seventh inning is a one run ball game. Move the ball around, throw at you liberally, and then move it on the outside corner. Yeah, sometimes they just throw for distance, and then other times they throw for effect. <laughs> they wouldn't miss. No, he was pretty, pretty big, strong guy. Chris Basio doing a nice job with Chicago Cubs pitching staff. He's a good man. Bray reached base on an error. And the count one and one. One three and two for them, one three and oh for us. And we're already in the bottom of the third inning. That ball hit high and deep in the right center field. Stretch! Stretch! He's back right against the fence. And the wind kept that one in the ballpark. Jose gave it a ride, but unfortunately, that ball just died in the gap. You don't see this too often, but the wind that swirls is knocking the ball down to right field. And Bradley able to go back with about a step and a half to spare. And he hauls it in. So here's Adam. Adam walked his first trip. Got the shift on. Two and over the count. This is the eight on deck. That's in the center field. And you can provide your guests with the ultimate all-inclusive White Sox experience in the home plate club or Magellan Scout seats. Now, these two premium seating areas are the best way to entertain your most important clients, your employees, your friends, or your family. So, for more information, 312-674-1000 or whitesox.com slash premium seating. Here's Tank. Watch out. A straight change that he got over the inside corner. And Diane could not wait long enough. That's high in the center field, so this is going to be an easy one, two, three inning with Bradley Jr. making all the plays, and we have finished three tied at one.
Daniel Nava, Ryan Roberts, Jackie Bradley Jr. First pitch strike. Nava grounded out to Alexei. John would love to have a very easy one, two, three inning, reminiscent of the second inning. Sandwiched in between two innings where he used a whole lot of pitches in the first and the third. 0 oh and 2 the count. There you can see the first and third, a little tough. Second, very simple one, two, three. Hoping for more of the same here. And another souvenir. Nava had a big year last year. His first decent year in the major leagues. Played sparingly in 2010. 2011 in the minor leagues. 2012, not much, 243. But last year, 303. 12 home runs, 66 driven in. And he started to become a pretty big factor in the lineup, especially from the left side. He go. I'm not very happy with that call of Corey Blazer, but if you're not going to give him the low strike, you got to give him the high strike. Well framed by Adrian Nieto. He moved his glove ever so gently, put it back in the zone, and he got the benefit of the call for his pitcher. Do I know the count to Roberts? Roberts is going to be playing third base till Will Middlebrooks comes back. He's nursing a calf problem. Shane Victorino has a hamstring problem. Neither of them are coming back real soon, although they miss both of them certainly. And he walks in. The third walk issued by Danks, and that'll bring up Jackie Bradley Jr., who struck out his first trip. Pops it up. Nieto. Yes. Nice play. By Adrian. Beautiful. Two great, down. Great recognition and then hustle straight back. And with Roberts tagging at first base, Adrian realizes that he's got to take a look over there because there might be a play at second. Big effort by Nieto. And then he gets up and takes a look at first and makes sure that Roberts cannot advance. That's a big out. Retiring a speedy base runner. 
So here's Pedroia. He has doubled hard into left field and scored. That was back in the first inning. In his second at bat, leading off last inning, he lined hard to center. Takes first pitch strike. Nice. Had him off balance out in front. And that'll retire the side to the bottom of the fourth. 1-1. One, one. In a 1 1 tie, bottom of the fourth inning, we got a pitcher's duel going. A lot of pitches thrown, but so far, both pitchers not giving way. They've both gotten out of jams. There's only two runs scored in the game, one for each one. Both pitchers are having the uh, pitches pile up. They, <laughs> they're trying to throw strikes. They just can't quite get there. But it will be Diaza to lead it off. He'll be followed by Ramirez and Nieto. Alejandro popped up to first. There's a bunt. Pretty good bunt. And the throw is off the mark, so that'll be a base hit. And Great. when you're not swinging the bat well, <laughs> bunt the ball. Great idea for Alejandro Diaz, who finally throws his hands up in the air, says, Yay, I got a hit. It's the right guy to bunt on. Roberts. Not a great third baseman, but he makes a pretty decent play here. And despite being in on the grass, Alejandro makes a perfect bunt. Roberts throws wide of the bag, but even if it's on the bag, he's not going to get him. So a promising start to the fourth inning. So here's Alexei. He went out to center field. Takes a strike. Hey. 
Outfield for the most part straight up big gap out there in left center. Yeah, Alexei looking for. At least one possibly two more to overtake Frank Thomas tied now with Lance Johnson for second place all time. In longest season opening hitting streaks. Took him till his last at bat in last night's game. He'd like to. Take the pressure off a little sooner. In tonight's game. Well you know we talked about. Alexei being a different guy this year as opposed to last spring. You know the story about Scott Merkin. It's pretty apparent why he was down last spring. Yep. I mean. Tragic murder of his. Father in law while he was in spring training. As that is into center field. So that is out number one. So that. Defines it all. So here's Nieto. He had a base hit in the center field. First and thirty, Adrian. There he goes. So he will pick up the stolen base. AJ got him last night when he tried to steal, but he picked the right pitch, a breaking ball down, and sold easily. That's his first of the year. And he's in scoring position. Now I'll pick him up. Oh, and to the count. Off that one. At least fairly short in center. As a size more in left. Second of the three game set. Finale tomorrow night, and what a nice pitching matchup it is. So make your plans to be with us here at the ballpark. Chris Sale against the Austin Southpaw, John Lester. We'll have the K zone open tomorrow night, section 154. Chris off to a great start this year. He's 3 0. John Lester, 1 2, but a sparkling 257 ERA. So, a battle of exceptionally talented left handers. Yep, two of the best in baseball. He knew it. Backdoor breaking ball, and nobody had to tell Adrian that it's time to take a seat. No, sir. Tip your cap on that one. <laughs> 
It's tough to do, but you got to do it as you get older and get a little more experience. When a guy makes a pitch like that on you, grab some bench. It's tough to go out there and get it when you recognize it's outside, hoping it doesn't snap over the corner, but you're helpless if it does. Pick him up, Adam. As he takes ball one. Adam was hit by a pitch and scored. That was in the first inning and then hit into a 6 4 fielder's choice. In the second. Outfield fairly shallow. Although Gomes is. A couple steps deeper in right field recognizing that Adam will have some occasional power. Awfully hit. And that'll retire the side. We have concluded four and we're tied at one. Goose eggs in New York. Top of the fifth inning. It'll be Bogarts, Ortiz, and Gomes to face Johnny Danks. One, three, and two for them, one, four, and oh for us. In game two of this three game set. Two and oh the count. Big Poppy in the on deck circle. Xander probably has figured out he's going to get a good pitch here. And he got one but couldn't pull the trigger. Count evens. And a full count. <laughs> and the dreaded leadoff walk. Fourth walk issued by Danks. And here comes Ortiz. He is single sharply to left, and then he hit a rocket down to first base that Abreu made a terrific play on.
was able to tag the bag and almost got Bogarts at second. As he fouls that one back. Bogarts has tried to steal one time and he was unsuccessful. Very quickly the count. Two strikes. Career against our Sox. David Ortiz a robust 305 batting average. Driven in 82 runs in 117 games. That's pretty impressive. Lays off that one upstairs. 90 pitch mark for John is he has labored a bit. And that's into left field. Watch out. Okay. One out. And Saturday, April 26, come see our Sox take on Tampa Bay at 610. All fans are invited to stay for a post-game fireworks show presented by Magellan Corporation. So purchase tickets visiting whitesox.com or 866-SOX-GAME. Johnny Gomes. 0 for 1 with the base on balls. That one, and that's going to be in the seats for a souvenir. Gomes has a routine at the plate. He will adjust that cap, keep the bill going up and down. But he has been a winning player. There he goes. Good strike, and what that routine does for you as a hitter, it gives you some place to go. If you're going to do the same thing each and every time, and most of your good hitters in baseball will do the same thing each and every time they go to the plate. It changes your focus. That's out of play. Pitchers, of course, have their own routines. One of the most graphic was a guy named Gaylord Perry. Well, he had to have that routine. Because <laughs> it took him a while to load it up. Quick throw to first. Bogart's back. It's nice that Adrian will let Bogart know that he's thinking about him on that secondary lead. Boy, you got a big jump. Big enough so there's no throw. It's his first stolen base of the year, and he read John Danks perfectly because he's going on first move. If John decides to go to first base on that play, well, he's hung out to dry. But that's the gamble, and he runs himself in a scoring position. Well, even if he does go over there with that jump he had, he's still got a chance to steal it. So two and two the count. Oh. 
Pops him up. Simeon. Marcus has it. We're out number two. Good fastball up and in. Johnny Gomes couldn't get the hands out. Couldn't have been in a better spot. You see where Nieto's setting up. Johnny throws that fastball. Gomes tries to bring his hands in, but he's unsuccessful. So here's Sizemore. That ball here well into center field, but we got a man there. And that'll retire the side halfway home, tied at one. Presented by WGN TV on April 30th at US Cellular Field. Prior to the game versus the Tigers. So, WGN TV meteorologist Tom Skilling will host a special program focused on weather. So, whitesocks.com slash WGN for more details. Still tied at one here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Marcus takes strike one. He has gone out to left and single to center. Count evens. If Marcus can get aboard to lead off this inning, it looks promising as Buckholz will have to fight through the middle of this order. Two two pitch. Ball four base hit, Marcus. Only one walk so far. That was Adam Dunn in the first inning. One out. 
Marcus thought it was high. Normally you don't get away with a slider up there. You saw AJ yank it down about two or three inches. So he thought it might have been a little high, but the deciding vote goes to Corey Blazer and he rings him up. So here's Connor. He's had a tough time in two at bats against Buckholz. A couple of punch outs. Had him out in front and the count. One and one. You got those two different kinds of straight changes. That one at 86 moving away from Connor. He will throw a splitter down. This is going to be the slider inside. Ate him up. Connor, good two strike hitter, buddy. And that's foul. Nice outfit. Two and two. And once again, a reminder tomorrow night, make your plans to be with us. Finale, finale of this three game set and this homestand. The sale against John Lester. If you can't make it, that game will be over Comcast Sportsnet. Stay fair, it won't. It's a great pitching matchup in Texas. Felix Hernandez against Hugh Darvish. Two of the best in the league. Felix and his Mariners leading two to nothing that game in the bottom of the seventh. I think Felix is going for a four and oh record. Two down. Another backdoor slider. Boy, Blazer said it was close enough. So here is Rayu. 0 for 2. Last time up, fly deep to right center field, taking Bradley Jr. up against the fence. Wind kept the ball in the park. And that's a can of corn in the center. We'll go to the sixth in this game tied at one.
Tonight's game is available in Spanish on your SAP audio setting provided by 97.5 FM ESPN Deportes. It's Chicago's first and only Spanish language sports radio station. With Hector Molina and Billy Russo. Here's Pierzynski. Twice he is grounded out to Gillespie at third. And twice Johnny Danks has thrown fastballs right in on his hands. One and two. Ronald Belisario listening in the pen. That's fair so far. Good play by John. He took his time after he picked it up. Well, John, over the last many years, has seen AJ run. And he knew that he had some time. It's not an easy play because a pitcher, especially the left hander, has to go to the line, has to turn, make a 180, and make sure this one is not into the back of the runner. Well, this is Lisa's fault, AJ's wife. She's got to start giving him some meal money. <laughs> I don't know. Three of the softest. <laughs> Ground balls you'll ever see. I'll tell you. Whoa. There's Nava. He's grounded to short, struck out, takes a curveball strike. After six in Houston, Astros leading Kansas City 4 2. First of a doubleheader in the Bronx. The Yankees shut out the Cubs 3 0. Second game of that doubleheader, top of the ninth. The Yankees shutting out the Cubs 2 0. First game belonged to Tanaka. He fanned 10 in eight innings, gave up two hits, no runs. That's in the left field off the end of the bat. Two now. Roberts with a good hack. Meanwhile, 0 and 1. Ryan has struck out and walked. There's a big man missing from this lineup, Mike Napoli. Yeah, big difference when he's not in there. You see that ring finger? That's the one he dislocated. He's got a splint on it. They figure he's not going to miss too many days. Up high, one and two. We missed that last night going into second base. The ball got away, and then his ring finger was pointing in a different direction. Yeah. Could have been a lot worse. A lot worse. Down ball, nice little Hawthorne Woods hop. And that'll do it. We go to the bottom of six. Still tied at one.
Join Miller Lite and Ron Kittle at Butera in Roselle on Friday, April 18th from 6 to 8 p.m. Guests receive a photograph and commemorative autograph card. Lucky fans 21 and over enter to win a chance to get a White Sox Miller Lite hoodie or hat and register for a chance to play softball at U.S. Cellular Field. This is brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light beer and official beer of your Chicago White Sox. Adam Dunn. Then Tank, then Diazza. Adam has walked and he is going out to center field. Makes first pitch strike. McColtz has used both the curve and the slider away to left hand hitters and use them very well. Now this guy's we got a couple of good pitchers out there tonight as we're going to have tomorrow night. Goes around the plate. Had a chance to talk with the fine skipper John Farrell today, talking to him about the injuries to his team. And he said it happens to everybody. The only break might be that it happened early to our group. They feel they can compete. They get good enough pitching to compete if they can get their offense squared around. And to do that, they got to get Victorino and Middlebrooks and Pedroia back to where they were. Now losing Napoli for a bit. Takes a whole lot away from what should be a pretty good offense. Full count to Adam. John was in the bullpen looking at Koji Uehura. Watching his bullpen today and pronounced that he would be ready to be used tomorrow night if need be. So we'll see the Sox closer. If necessary tomorrow evening he has not been available the first two nights. And there's ball four. So the lead off walk. Second time Adam has walked tonight. The only two walks of the ball game. For Buckholz. Adam walked three times last night. After that home run. Hit the ball out of the ballpark is one thing. Getting on base. Completely different thing. He came in with a 468 on base percentage, and that's helped out tonight. Here's Tank. Gives him that pitch, and the count 0 and 1. Tank is one for two with a single. Adam Dunn, Alexei Ramirez, 1 2 in the American League and on base percentage. Good job of staying alive. And after that called strike on the first pitch, yeah, you, that's, that's you up the whole thing. There. Yeah, you've got to go out and try to spoil that pitch. One way or the other, you're going to be hacking at it. And he was able to just get a piece, broke his bat, and we'll have another opportunity. Yeah, that sets up the whole of that in a defensive manner.
first and 30. It's the best curveball that Buckholz has thrown tonight. No chance at all for Viziedo. Take a look at the late movement on this one. Straight down, just out of the zone. Perfect pitch. And he got him. So here's Diazza. He's one for two, had a bunt single, then picked up his first stolen base of the season. It was leading off the fourth. So now you got Roberts well in on the grass at third. And that is shanked out there. Sizemore's not going to be able to get up there. Oh, and one to count. Alejandro. Boy, a lot of shutouts. Ooh, Cubs got shut out in the double header. In the Big Apple, the Yankees beating them three to nothing and two to nothing. Atlanta shuts off Philadelphia one nothing. Tampa Bay shut out by Baltimore three nothing. Cincinnati shutting out Pittsburgh four to nothing. As that ball is hit foul. Out of the eighth in Texas, still two nothing. Seattle. Of course, a 1 1 tie here in the bottom of the sixth. Ready to deliver pitch number 100. So both pitchers have been very effective. And both pitchers have seen their pitch counts go into triple digits. He just looks the second. Well, I'm surprised he didn't go to second because he's got him dead to rights there. Well, Bogart was just a little late getting there, and he decided to go ahead and take the out. But you're right; he could have still waited. He's had plenty of time to get at him. That could prove to be costly. This is a one-to-one -one game. Right here, he looks. All he's got to do is throw it to Bogarts, and Adam is halfway. Yeah. So, that being said, there's a break, especially if Alexi can make him pay. But. The question is, if you're A.J. Pruszynski, play Buckholes, do you pitch to one of the hottest hitters in the league, or do you go around him and take your chances with the rookie? First slider wasn't anywhere near the plate. Be surprised if he gave him anything too good to hit. If he does, I believe it's a mistake. But we'll see. Ball gets by him back to the stop. And that'll be a wild pitch. Now, you get a guy who's leading the league in hitting at the plate. I can't pitch to him. That's the first wild pitch of the year. And occasionally when you try to go around a guy, things like this happen. How about one more? And throw him a straight change. Let's see if he keeps it in the air. And he had him way out in front of that. So a perfect straight change and he's back in the count. Oh. 
That ball hit deep. Stretch, stretch, back. You can put it on the board. Yeah. The man who was leading the league and hitting a two-run homer. And it's a 3-1 Sox lead. First. I am ecstatic they pitched to Alexi. I am shocked that they pitched to him. It cost him a two-run homer. That's 15 straight hit in by Ramirez. He ties the all-time White Sox lead. More importantly, that's home run number four. He's driven in 14 to tie Abreu. And a real bad thought process on the part of Clay Buckholtz. So here is Nieto. Mercy. Wow. Lexi is about as hot as he'll ever be in the course of his career, and he just have to ride the hot hand. As there's a base hit by Nieto, so now he is two for three. This is supposed to be a sinker. It doesn't sink. It stays on the inner portion. And Alexi unloads. Well, after the wild pitch you got done on third base now, you know that takes away anything down low. He, he threw it. He threw a fastball at 88. And Alexi, who's had just an unbelievable beginning to this year, continues. Don't stop now, boys. As here's Adam. Three six and zero oh for us. One three and two for them. Count evens at one. Uh, ready to deliver pitch one oh nine. That ball hit deep in the left field. Stretch. Get over his head. Back up against the fence. Hauls it in. But the two run homer by Alexi Ramirez. Sox lead it three to one.
Done. Ronald Belisario takes over. One and one. ERA. Well, it's up there. On for the seventh time. Opponents hitting 417, largely due to the pummeling he took in Colorado. But he's trying to get the control back. Nieto goes out to have a word with him. Nags went six, gave up a run. The first three guys he faced, double, single, and single. That was in the first inning. Pedroia, Bogarts, and Ortiz. He did not give up another hit. And he was brilliant once again. The four walks, the only blemish, one run. And he leaves ahead. Well, as we talked, Johnny's back. Now the corner's in close. And Bradley Jr. Takes ball one. He is struck out and fouled out on a beautiful play by Nieto. Bullpen up and going for our Sox. And the bullpen up and going for their socks. But it all started with that dreaded leadoff walk. Daza almost in his tracks. It's Scott Downs throwing in the pen. He picked up an inning last night. Struck out one and the rest goose egg. So his first very good performance in a Sox uniform. And that's encouraging. The Droya with a leadoff double. Greg Breslow throwing in the bullpen. He's one of the few we didn't see last night. There's a strike and count two and one. Three six and oh for us, one three and two for them. Two and two. And of course, with that home run by Alexei, the Alex Nellius family will donate. The White Sox charities and loving memory of Ursula. That is home run number 20. For our Sox. Full count. Over the years, Alex Nellius has donated over $260,000 to White Sox charities. He outguessed him because that fastball had the whole plate. Pedroia doesn't like it, but that was a good call by Corey Blazer. And John Farrell trying to keep his little second baseman in the game. But when Dustin sees this again, he'll realize that that ball had most of the plate. Yeah, that's very unusual for Dustin. As hard as he competes, sometimes you just can't stand it. He's still a little unhappy. Bogerts, that RBI single in the first, he was hit by a pitch, then he walked and stole a base, so he's one for one. And the count evens at one. The 
Cleveland has defeated the Tigers 3 2. Detroit as there's a ground ball to Hopper. Nice shift. By Brave. Seventh inning stretch, we lead it 3 to 1. Craig Breslow comes in the game in relief for Clay Buckholz, who went six, gave up the three runs on six hits, walked a pair, fan six. And Breslow comes in for the third time this year, no earned run average. He's thrown a total of one and two thirds innings, being a situational left hander. And the situation is he's trailing by a pair. Two, three, and four in the batting order. Simeon, Gillespie, and Abreu. This also might be a case here. This battery of Breslow and Pierzynski might have the highest combined IQ of any battery in the history of baseball. Between the two of them. AJ with a IQ off the charts. And Breslow. The same. In fact, he graduated from Yale in 2002. Did Breslow with degrees, degrees in molecular biophysics and biochemistry. Not bad. I'm not sure if it's helped him pitching, but he's been around a long time. It's helped him against us because we can't do anything with him. He is the prototypical crafty left hand. 3 6 and 0 oh for our guys, 1 3 and 2 for their guys. Simeon fouls it into the seats for a souvenir. Feel slightly to the right. Nice gap out there in left center if he can find it. Got him. So Buckholz. So Buckholz got some stuff. He is got some outstanding stuff. Well, he said last year pitching in the World Series and he threw four innings because he was hurt. From the middle of the season on. He said it taught him that he could actually get people out. Without that big fastball that he usually has. And it really hasn't come back to him completely yet. Gillespie 
Fires that one into center field. He was over three with three strikeouts against Buckles. Well, you, when you got stuff like Buckles, God, you know, you know yourself. You've been around a long time. You had a big fastball at one time, lost it, and came back and learned how to win a Cy Young without it. It takes a tipping point sometimes for a guy to understand that he doesn't have to go pedal to the metal with that fastball every pitch. Well, that's what what. Lanny well, Evans told me about Buckholz was that he can do more with the baseball as far as finger pressure, making the ball move one way or the other way than any pitcher on their staff. And except for the decision to pitch to Alexi tonight, he threw the ball exceptionally well. Well, that was a mental mistake. In that situation, pitching to the guy who's as hot as Alexi, leading the league and hitting, and you got the rookie on deck. It was indeed. Abreu, 0 for 3. Boy, he just teed off on one in the third inning. Wynn kept that ball in the ballpark, deep into right center field. Plate's getting a little wider, boys, so you have to start swinging the bats. That's okay as long as it's for both sides. Yes. This should be. But once again, Breslow, no problem. Meanwhile, we'll go to the ace leading 3 1. Homer in the sixth, the difference, current 15 game hitting streak tied with Frank Thomas for the all time best season opening hitting streak. Start something special with great leases and low financing on your new Honda. Visit shophonda.com or call your local Honda dealer. And young man picked pretty good game for his first Sox game, hopefully the first of many. And Scott Downs comes into the game at 0-2, the ERA a little over 10, coming off his best performance of the year last night. David Ortiz. Big Poppy one for three, had a first inning single. Takes first pitch strike.
Pretty good pitch, didn't get it. Come on. That one caught the bottom of the zone. They got the shift on. Ortiz has faced down 19 times, has five hits, four of which stayed in the park. Trichka and Veal throwing in the pan. We saw both of them in the ball game last night. One pitch. Helped him out right there. So a full count. Dreaded lead off wall. And Robin's coming out and he had downs slated for one hitter and he didn't get him. So Johnny Gomes on deck as Scott Downs departs and we'll be back. By the desire to be active and continue doing the things you love. So visit Athletico.com and start redefining your pain-free inner athlete today. Athletico, the official physical therapy provider of the White Sox. Athletico, better for everybody. Jake Patrichka comes into the ball game. No record, but a 352 ERA on for the sixth time. He's got to go through the middle of the order. Johnny Gomes followed by Sizemore and Pierzynski. Got Big Poppy on first base and nobody out.
Takes ball one. Gomes is grounded into one double play this year. Count evens. Well, we got the leadoff walk last inning. In the sixth. He came away with two runs. They get the leadoff walk here in the top of the eighth. And he's got to pitch. We have to pitch out of it. Come on, Jake. Three and one. Back to back walks. <laughs> and on a night with a very big plate, Jake wasn't anywhere near. So here comes Robin once again. Sizemore is going to be the hitter. He's going to get Donnie Veal. Veal. Light. Now this year's tournament will be held on June 16th at Harborside International Golf Center. So join the fun. Sign up your foursome by visiting WhiteSoxCharities.org or call 312-674-5391. Donnie Vio comes in and he's on for the seventh time. Six walks in five and a third innings has been a problem. He was in last night. A third of an inning, a huge strikeout. He's going to face Grady Sizemore with a tying run at first base. Gillespie on the grass at third. Abreu almost even with a bag at first as that pitch is taken for a ball. Back to back walks. Michael Clayto throwing in the pen. That strike even counted one. Then he got the low strike, something that hasn't happened a whole lot.
Connor. That was very slow by Gillespie going to second base. And it allowed Johnny Gomes to get a piece of Simeon. You got to get the ball fired over there and trust that you're going to make a good solid throw. And leaves runners at the corners. Well, if you'll check to see where Marcus is right here when he gets there, he has to. He thinks he's got to wait just a little bit. Good takeout slide. Yeah, with where Simeon was playing, took him a while to get to that bag. As here is, here's AJ. AJ's over three tonight. Has more good lead. There's a strike. One and one to count to Przinski. Got that one by him. Runners at the corners, one out. Three, seven, and zero oh for us. One, three, and two for them here in the top of the eighth inning. That ball into left center field. So the tag. And the first walk will cross the plate. Then it's a 3 2 ball game. Wise choice to get the ball into second base. No chance to get David Ortiz. So AJ with his first sacrifice fly of the year, fifth run batted in, and now it's a one run game. Bring up Nava. Daniel has faced Donnie one time and he has one hit. Two and zero the count. Rangers came back in the bottom of the ninth to beat the Mariners three two. And the count three and zero. So that's the third walk of the inning. And we're going to see the fourth pitcher of the inning. Four pitches, nowhere near the zone. And Michael Plato is going to come in. And we'll see if Robert stays in the game. So as Plato comes in, we'll step out and be back after these messages.
MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Get live look-ins, instant replay, score stats, audio, free MLB TV game of the day, and more. So download the App Store or visit WhiteSox.com. And with the bases loaded, Michael Plato comes in the game on for the seventh time, no earned run average. Opponent sitting a paltry 105 against him. He will not face Roberts. He's being taken down for Michael Carp. The Carp, who was retired in a key situation last evening, it got Daniel Webb the victory, as it turned out. He'll bat with the bases loaded and Carp hitting 214 overall. 0 for 4 is a pinch hitter. So two out, two on. Our Sox lead at 3 2 here in the top of the eighth. Want to know the count? Count evens in one. <laughs> at 99 after the call strike at 98. So Carp in a one two hole. Sitting on that bench in cold weather. Sometimes it's a little tough to catch up with a 100 mile an hour fastball. The job that he has been slated to provide for the Red Sox coming off the bench late. Well, he's dangerous, Carp. Yeah. He's dangerous. But tough job. You better believe it is, especially in this kind of weather. 43 degrees as we speak. Two and two. Took the glove right off of Nieto's hand, and the count goes full. Junichi Tazawa loosening up in the pen. We saw him last night, and he had excellent stuff. So two out, full count. Runners at first and second, and the payoff pitch. That's the fourth walk of the inning. Now it's Don Cooper. Four walks in this inning. Start off the eighth inning with a three run lead. Check that with a two run lead. Three to one is now three two. And they don't have a hit. Haven't come close to a hit. No. Jonathan Herrera takes over at first base for Carp. Herrera acquired from the Colorado Rockies. 
Very good speed. The man you're worried about is standing at home plate, Jackie Bradley. Jackie is 0 for 3 tonight. And he takes ball one. Big pitch right here. A little flare. Alexei, yes! I'll tell you what, you walk four guys in an inning like this, you ought to get beat. When we get out of it, giving up just a one run, we'll go to the bottom of the eighth, leading 3-2. Jonathan Herrera stays in the ball game after pinch running. He'll play third base. And they go into the severe shift for Adam Dunn. Takes ball one. Adams walked twice and going out to center. He also has scored. Count evens at one. Fazawa most likely there for Viciedo. Who's due up next? And Fazawa continues to throw in the bullpen. That's chopper off the foot. So the count one and two. Three runs, seven hits, no errors for our guys. Two runs, three hits, two errors for their guys here in game two of this three game set. Jim Joyce looking over in that Red Sox dugout saying, What's. Well, Farrell's probably saying it didn't hit off his foot. Oh. 
close. AJ, two and two. AJ tried to bring that one a long way back over the inside corner. Well, he's not bashful. Might as well try it. Yeah. The only thing can happen is they call it as it was a ball. One out. And that's going to be it for Breslow. He'll depart this one. All right, so Breslow, who always does well against us, he does his job, he'll depart, and we'll be back. Tozawa. He doesn't have an ERA, and this is eighth outing. Six and two thirds, seven hits, nine strikeouts, just one walk. We saw him last night. He gave up a hit, struck out one in his one inning of work, and relief to Jake Peavy. First man he's going to look at is Diane Viciato. Tank is one for three tonight. A single back in the first inning. Then he went out to center and struck out. Because I was got a very good splitter, a good curveball, and normally starts off every right-hander he faces with that curve. Let's see what AJ calls and what Tazawa throws. Uh, he's like Buckholes. He very throw, seldom throws anything straight. There was the hook, and he missed with it. So one and know the count. Third base backhanded by Herrera, the long peg. Two down. And that'll bring up Diazza. Alejandro one for three with a butt single and a stolen base. And he has faced Tazawa four times, has a couple of hits. First pitch strike. If you're just tuning in, one home run in the ball game. It was a big one. Two run blast by Alexi Ramirez in the sixth. 
Scoring Dunn, who had walked to lead off that inning. The RBIs. We only have two, that two run homer. There was no RBI on the run scoring in the first inning for them. Bogarts with an RBI and Pierzynski with an RBI. For their guys in the ninth, it'll be the top of the order. Pedroia, Bogarts, and Ortiz. And it looks like it's going to be Michael Clayton to face him. Backhand play. Nice by Tozawa. All right, a one, two, three inning. We'll go to the ninth, leading by one. Sending off the bat of Alexei Ramirez in a 1 1 game, he ties the all time Sox record for a hit streak to start the season. That's the 15th straight he's hit in, his fourth home run, giving the Sox a two run lead at the time. Xfinity or home for the most live sports? First pitch strike as you look at Jordan Danks to Dustin Pedroia leading off here in the top of the ninth inning. Pedroia led off the game with a double, came around the score. One and one to count. And that one out of play at ninety six. Michael on top, the ball and two strikes to the former MVP, Dustin Pedroia. Fires that one out of play. Now 
outfield shading him to the right. Well, he shook off a straight change. And then a fastball away. So let's see. There's the changeup. And that was about a 48 footer. Full count. That's five walks in the last inning plus. There's Bogarts. He's one for two, had an RBI single in the first inning. Gillespie at the cut of the grass at third. And there he goes. He guessed right on the first pitch. Cleto paying no attention to first base, and that's first stolen base for Pedroia. So the tying run in scoring position. And Michael can't get anything over the plate but a fastball. This is a slider. And not much of a chance for Adrian on that pitch. This is sad. Matt Lindstrom loosening up in the pen. Three and oh. And the big man's on deck. Pretty good pitch, didn't get the call. When you walk six guys in an inning plus, you're yeah. not going to get many. You're not going to get any breaks, but that was pretty good pitch. Watch where it shows up. Oh, here comes Robin. Six walks in an inning plus. Four last inning. Two so far this inning. So Clayton will depart. Lindstrom comes on with two on. Nobody out. Ortiz the hitter. And we'll be back.
one for three in save situations and he inherits the bases. Well the game on the bases actually. The tying and go ahead run first and second. David Ortiz. The hitter he's going to face. We have issued 10 walks in this game. If you're just getting home, 10 walks, six in the last inning plus. So here's Ortiz. He's one for three with a walk. He started off last inning with a walk and came around the score. He has faced Matt one time and he's 0 for 1. That ball in the left field. Pedroia is tagging. He's not going to go. And that's a big out, out number one. Picked on the first pitch. It was a strike. It was on the outer third. And he didn't get a whole lot in it. So now double play ground ball away from getting out of the inning and winning the ball game. But Johnny Gomes who's grounded into one. And drew a walk last inning steps in. Gomes has walked twice in this game. He's popped up to right and popped up to second. Softly hit. And that'll load him up. That would be an infield single. Couldn't have bunted it any better. And nothing for Gillespie to do. He was playing back. Has fouled out to right, walked, lined out to center, and hit into a 5 4 fielder's choice. Sacks packed with Red Sox. One out. Big hack and the count, nothing in one. Good speed at second and third, adequate speed at best at first. Oh, and two the count. Do that one right under his hands in a perfect spot. Well, another one right there might get the job done. That good movement tailing back. No two pitch. Try to get it there. And AJ on deck.
Ball and two strikes to Grady Sizemore. Grady missing two years. The last two years. Hard to believe with all the surgeries he had. Keep himself together that he was able to come back. And make this team out of spring training. That ball hit deep into left center field. And we got ourselves a tie ball game. I mean, number five for Sizemore. Second sacrifice fly of the night for the Red Sox. And that one with good movement, but Sizemore gets enough into it. Where the leadoff walk scores a tying run. Leadoff walk in the eighth comes around to score when we walk for that inning, if you're just tuning in. Leadoff walk here in the ninth comes around to score. And we have walked two in this inning. So six walks and an inning and two thirds. And here's AJ. He's 0 for 3 with a sacrifice fly. He got a good pitch to hit and fouls it away. He's faced Matt three times, has three hits. Away, so both runners will advance. And the count 0 and 2. This goes as a wild pitch. That slider down and in. And Adrian can't corral it. For our guys in ninth. Ramirez, Nieto, and back to the top of the order with Adam Eaton. Ball and two strikes. Down ball sucked up. Close him out. But we give him another one. With all these bases on balls, we're tied at three. Comes into this. 
He's 1 0 ERA, 2 and a quarter on for the seventh time. Opponents hitting 154 against him. He came out for two thirds of an inning in last night's game. He gave up a walk, and that was it. Don't need much of a rally, just one run. All right, boys, let's go. Let's put that behind us. Getting something started right here with Alexi. Alexi is one for two, that big two run homer back in the sixth inning to put us on top three to one. Outfield straight up and very much spread out. Huge gaps, especially in left center. It's one of the few low strikes he's called all night, and that ball, if it hit the zone, it just barely tickled it. One and one to count. Canerco has come out on deck. Shanks that one. Stops that one foul. So the count hangs at one and two. Those are huge breaking sliders. Six seven two hundred ten pounds. Andrew Miller. One out. They looked like a strike for a minute, but that ball almost hit him. And they don't come close. Tough pitch to hit. So here's Pauly. He's faced Miller seven times, has one hit. Takes it right there at 95. Easy 95. From the tall, lanky left hander. Ten guys. We're lucky the score is not eight three Boston. Last couple innings, very little control. Matt Lindstrom actually came on and did a very good job getting out of that situation with just a one run. Whew. One and two the count. A 
time he made a mistake with that slider and kept it up in the zone and Paul followed it straight back. Jacks it up. So two balls, two strikes. Adam Eaton in the on deck circle. Reach base one time. Got hit in the first inning and scored. Bogarts. Two down. Here comes Adam. First time he's ever faced Andrew Miller. Herrera is not a natural third baseman. Adam might be thinking about a bunt down that way. Trying to take that one with him. Takes it, checks it. And takes the ball. One and one to count with two down here in the bottom of the ninth, tied at three. Now Miller on top one and two. Finale of this homestand. Tomorrow night, Chris Sale against John Lester. So make your plans to be with us. If you can't, that game will be over Comcast Sportsnet. And then it's on the road again. As he gets him in, we'll go to extra innings. Daniel Nava will lead it off here in the top of the 10th inning as Tyler Flowers moves in behind the plate for Adrian Nieto. Adrian was 
Two for three tonight. We saw Nava crush one from the left side. That coming in the fourth inning last night. It's the only run the Red Sox got. Two and all the count. I pop up. Adams got him for out number one. Jonathan Herrera is going to get his first at bat. So the first time that Herrera has seen Lindstrom. And you got the corners in close. He started the ball game last night, went one for three. Takes first pitch strike. Checking some other scores. Cleveland beat the Tigers in Detroit three to two. Texas in the bottom of the ninth, beat Seattle three two. Nasty Nats beat Miami 6 3 down in Florida. Atlanta shuts out. Check that. Kansas City and Houston tied at four. That's in the 10th inning. There's a strike. Two balls, two strikes to Herrera. Year old switch hitter. Slams that one foul. After five out in Los Angeles, Anaheim, four one Oakland. Toronto at Minnesota that game was postponed. Bottom of the fifth in San Diego Padres leading the Rockies three to one. Top of the sixth at AT and T. Giants shutting out the Dodgers one nothing. Great American ballpark Cincinnati shut out Pittsburgh four zip. And that's into center field. Can of corn for our Adam Eaton. Two down. <laughs> and here is Bradley Jr. He's 0 for 4 tonight. Cubs lose a doubleheader in the Bronx. Yankees win 3 0 and 2 0. Break up the Brewers. They beat the Cardinals five to one. Milwaukee now eleven and four. <laughs> it's one of the few high strikes that hasn't been called today. Oh, you don't know what you're going to get. One and zero the count. Two and up. Mets beat the D-backs five two out in Phoenix. Well, the Diamondbacks are really scuffling. Four and fourteen this year. Chopper. So a nice inning for our Lindstrom. One two three. We go to the bottom of the tenth. Simeon, Gillespie, and Abreu.
Three runs, seven hits, no errors for our Sox. Three runs, four hits, two errors for their Sox. For us, it'll be Simeon, Gillespie, and Abreu who face the 6 7 Southpaw, Andrew Miller. Gainesville, Florida, home of the Gators. Our number one draft pick of the Detroit Tigers, sixth player pick overall. Lasted one year and then went to the Florida Marlins. The principal, Miguel, Miguel Cabrera, coming back from the Marlins. First pitch strike as he checks it up. Marcus tonight, one for four. Second inning single. Daniel Webb loosening in the pen. Good pass at that one. Meanwhile, it's 0 2. Game of the homestand in this off to Texas and Detroit. As he gets him in that's out number one. Eleven strikeouts now for Boston pitching. And ten walks for our Sox pitching. Takes it inside ball one. If you're just getting home, prepare. We had this game pretty much in hand. 3 1 lead going to the eighth inning. When we walked four guys, one of them scored, made it 3 2. And in the ninth, we walked the first two men in that inning. And one of them came around the score. That was Pedroia. And that tied it at three. Fires that one. Into the lows. So one and two the count to Gillespie. Red Sox bullpen up and going. Set for the boy. Might behoove us to get a run because ours is getting a little skinny out there. Is that? Well, after three strikeouts, the first three times up, Connor has a couple of base hits in the seventh, and here representing the winning run in the tenth. Daniel Webb is the last guy standing out there. Jose, 0 for 4. But back in the third inning, he just crushed one. Deep out there, high towering drive in right center field, taking Bradley Jr. up against the fence. The wind held it in. There's a man who was on the mound last night. And he got the loss. Gunner's got to be ready to go if Miller's going to throw that hard breaking slider in the dirt. Here it comes. Let's see if AJ can corral it. They're going to force it. They can't turn it. Tried by Pedroia. Slowly hit. The 
Pedroia getting the throw off before the contact. He can't get it there in time. So here's Adam. Adam a couple of walks. He walked three times last night. Gets that one foul. He also is going out to center and struck out. So big man 0 for 2. He's faced Miller nine times and he has one hit. Jordan Danks on deck. Sacks it up. A ball and a strike. Ball and two strikes. And that evens the count. Oh, big man. One time. The only men really men and light him up. A little nubber out in front of the mound. Miller's got plenty of time. Takes it, makes it, and we will go to the 11th. Daniel Webb, the last man standing in the pen coming into this game at 1 0, the ERA. 235 on for the sixth time. And he'll be facing the top of the order, the top of the order that produced the tying run in the ninth inning. Pedroia led it off of the walk on the first pitch, stole second. And eventually came around to score on a sacrifice fly by Grady Sizemore. So the last man down in the pen is on the bump. None of these guys have ever seen Daniel Whip. That are coming to face him this inning. Takes it low and away. Evens one and one to the captain of this ball club.
Two and one to count. He scored a run in the first inning. And then two in the fifth on the two run homer by Alexei Ramirez. That made it a 3 1 Sox lead, and then we gave it away with the base on balls in the eighth and ninth. Pretty good pitch did not get it. And a full count. So the 11th walk issued by our pitching tonight. Ogarts has been on base four times. A couple of walks, got hit, and an RBI base hit in the first inning. Red Sox do not have a sacrifice bunt this year. Well, you got to know your own players what they can't do. Don't ask them to do it. Bogarts. Balance that one back. So one and one to count. Oh, and one to count. Check that. And that is just foul. Pretty close to being a man on second, third, and nobody out. That one didn't miss by much. But fortunately, says Marvin Hudson, it was a foul ball. Pitch out, nothing on. Picked by Tyler. Chris Sale against John Lester tomorrow night. A game on Comcast Sportsnet if you can't make it to the ballpark. And that's a chopper foul. Kansas City scored a couple in the top of the 11th. Mike Mustakas with a homer. They lead Houston 6 4.
That hit him. So the leadoff walk and a hit Bassman. Second time tonight Bogarts has gotten hit. Tried to get out of the way, got him on the leg. Been a tough night for our bullpen. Case you just tuning in, Johnny Danks really pitched well. Once again, Johnny is back. Six innings, one run, three hits, all those coming in the first three men he faced in the ball game. Lead off double by Pedroia, RBI single by Bogarts, single by Ortiz, and that was it as far as hits go. Johnny did walk four, struck out three. So that's a positive note. Along with Alexei's two run homer, put us on top three to one and extend his hitting streak to 15 games. As he takes first pitch strike. Big Poppy, one for four with that leadoff walk in the eighth, and he came around to score. Turn throw no. Dave Ortiz just busting it down that line. And Bogart's doing a nice job of making sure that Alexi could not get the throw off. So here's Johnny Gomes. Very appreciative Boston dugout. Johnny has walked twice as an infield single. Turned out to be a big infield single back in the ninth inning. Checks it up and takes ball one. Johnny goes, they go to postseason play. And there's two and oh. Size more on deck. That ball's hurt. But we got a man there. He will make the catch, so for the third time in this game, Pedroia scores and the Red Sox lead 4 3. Third time in this game that the Red Sox have a sacrifice fly. Gomes tattooed that ball. This is third run batted into the year. But a big one is the Red Sox take the lead. And again, the leadoff man, the leadoff walk comes around. The score. That's three times that has happened in this game, and they lead it four to three. Size more. Takes ball one. For us in the bottom of the 11th, it'll be Danks, Diaza, and Ramirez. We can get something done. Edward Mohica loosening up in the pen. Big hack by Grady.
Three and one to count. And that's it hard right at him. But they come up with a run again, a leadoff walk. We'll cross on plate. We'll go to the bottom of the 11th, failing 4 3. Of the game at 0-1, the ERA up over 10 on for the fifth time. He closed a bit for the Cardinals and was very good. Before moving on here to Boston, taking over for Koji Uehura, who has had a tender shoulder but will be available tomorrow night, just not tonight. There you look at some numbers that would lead you to believe that there's a couple of runs to be scored. Here we go. Jordan, start us off. Well, we've walked 11 guys tonight, and the team record is 16. That was back in 19 and 52 against the Philadelphia A's. It just seems like it's a team record because a lot of them came late and at inopportune times. Well, we walked six. We walked four to eighth and two in the ninth. In fact, they lead at four to three if you're just tuning in, and they've scored the last three runs. With only one hit. They only have four for the night. And he checks it up. One and one. And the one hit was Johnny Gomes' little swinging bunt down the third baseline that didn't drive him running in. One and two the count. Grind it out with him, Jordan. Chops that one foul. Two and two. Well, he could last year he had 37 saves with the Cardinals. Signed by the Red Sox as a free agent insurance policy, a guy who was no stranger to closing. Well, 
Well, that in itself has a ton of merit. You're not kidding. And a full count. Some guys, some guys are just not cut out to close a ball game. As there are some hitters who are just not cut out to driving a big run. And there is the leadoff walk. Good eye by Jordan. Steady diet of change ups from Mojica. And there's a tying run aboard. And here comes Alejandro. He's one for four. Come on, buddy. We need you. We played this long. We might as well go ahead and win it. And he takes ball one. Fouls it away. Perfect pitch for him to hit. He just couldn't quite square it up. First fastball move he gets thrown. Count one and two. There he goes. There's the throw. Not in time. That was a pretty good one. It looked a touch late, and John Farrell coming out now. It, it was, was a close play. Perfect peg by AJ, doing all he could. Good jump by Jordan Danks. But his foot was on the bag before he tagged the knee. It was a one hop throw. He has to come up a bit. And the lead leg, the left leg, looked like it had the bag before he tagged the knee. He's yep, safe. He's safe. Good call by Doug Eddings. Right here. And a big out. Big out. So here is Alexei. Alexei is one for four. A two run homer back in the sixth inning. For Alexei, that was his fourth homer. He now has RBIs 13 and 14. Tyler Flowers in the on deck circle. One run down Sunday afternoon. John Axford on the hill and a high fastball goes out of the park for a game winner. Ground ball. Nava will take it himself. So two down now and Jordan into third and it's up to Tyler.
Kyler making his first plate appearance. If you're just tuning in. Adrian Nieto started. He went to the plate three times. He had two hits. Paulie pinch hit for him in the ninth. Takes first pitch strike. One and two. Good eye. That was off the corner as so he could try to heat him upstairs. Ground ball get through there. It will. It will. This game is tied at four. Yes. He left that ball on the outer third. Did not go to the changeup. And Jordan Dank scores the tying run. For Tyler Flowers in his first at bat. He takes it right back up the middle past Bogarts. And this game is tied at four. Don't stop now, boys. Let's put another one on the board. RBI number six for Tyler. There's a man that scored the tying run after the stolen base. And the leadoff walk. This is going to be a fun club to watch this year. When I say emotional, it's going to be emotional. That's foul back. Adam 0 for 4. He was hit by a pitch and scored back in the first inning. Well, he hit the daylights out of one in the sixth inning that chased Sizemore all the way back to the track. Could use another one of those here. That ball hit into left field. Sizemore's got the beat, but the key clutch. Two out single by Tyler Flowers knocks in Jordan Danks and we're still playing.
12th inning, Daniel Webb still out on the mound for his second inning of work. And it's a 4-4 game. Red Sox have managed just four hits. They made a couple of errors, both coming in the first inning. Our Sox, nine hits. They played an errorless game. And A.J. Pierzynski is going to lead it off. Had a sacrifice fly in the eighth inning. He is 0 for 4. Pierzynski, Nava, and Herrera to face Webb. Temperatures dropped to 41 degrees. This game very close to the 420 mark. And A.J. noticing that they were an umpire short. Decided to wait until Doug Eddings and Marvin Hudson get in position. Outfield playing A.J. to pull. And he looks at a slider high and wide. It's been Danks, Belisario, Downs, Patrichka, Veal, Plato, Lindstrom, and now Webb, who's fallen behind 2 0 on Pierzynski. Next pitch will be the 400th pitch delivered to this ball game. Ground ball. Right at Simeon. He eats it up and quickly one out. Good sinker by Daniel Webb. That'll bring up Daniel Nava. Nava started this game hitting from the right side. He's 0 for 4 with a walk. That walk coming in the eighth inning. Not much of a batting average this year for Nava. That being said, he hit a towering home run last night in the fourth inning. The only run the Red Sox got. Round ball right at Alexi at shortstop. Picks it clean. Fires across quickly two up, two down. So Jonathan Herrera steps in. He's had one at bat. That fly out coming in the 10th. And he looks at a fastball for a strike. Herrera came on to pinch run, then later took over at third base. And the outfield plays him straight away, not overly deep, and he looks at a high fastball. So the count evens at one and one. Rifle down the line, but foul. Herrera coming over from the Colorado Rockies. Franklin Morales, pitcher who started in the series against us in Denver, going over to the Rockies. And the 1 2 pitch takes it low and in. Well, the count evens at 2. Thirteen thousand three hundred and two folks attended this ball game at the start. A lot fewer here now. Little chopper. Webb has it. Takes his time. Throws to first and a quick one-two-three inning. So it's on to the bottom of the twelfth inning and his four-four tie.
looking at Chris Capuano, who was on the mound last night when the ball was booted. Bad throw by Bogarts. Carp could not corral it at first base. Maddenhop got the loss. And there you look at the numbers for Capuano on for the seventh time. He does not have an ERA. Chris used to be a very good starter when he was with the Milwaukee Brewers. Now relegated to the bullpen. He's got a good straight change. And it's the heart of the order. Simeon, Gillespie, and Abreu. If anybody gets on, Adam Dunn. Marcus, one for five. That single coming in the second inning. Well, in this game, and you're going to win 60, you're going to lose 60. It's what you do with the other 42. And this is definitely in the 42 category right here. It was a game seemingly won only to see the base on balls pop up repeatedly. But then a big run in the bottom of the 11th. As that one misses down and in. Capuano in 2005 for Milwaukee was 18 and 12 as a starter. He started 35 games through 219 innings, followed it up 11 and 12 through 221 innings. So you're talking about a very dependable starter for the Brewers before becoming a pensman for the Sox. That evens the count of one and one. Fly ball right field well hit but plenty of room. Danny Gomes calls for it and makes the play. That'll bring up Connor Gillespie who fanned the first three times he came to bat tonight before singling in the seventh and again in the tenth. So he's two for five. Connor off to a good start hitting 320. He's driven in nine runs. Herrera well off the line at third. The outfield playing him straight away. Not much of a swing there as he was obviously fooled by the changeup. And it's 0 1. Capuano, the sixth Red Sox pitcher of the night. And that evens the count of one and one. Chris, 6'3, 215 pounds. This is his 10th year in the big leagues. Fastball that Corey Blazer calls a strike. <laughs> AJ has to drag it back over the corner, and it's one and two. The appeal, no swing. So the count evens a two two. Take another look from the side and no he did not swing didn't come close. In a long game for that young man and a cold one at that. Filed that one off to stay alive sweeping breaking ball away. Jose Abreu in the on deck circle has been held hitless tonight. Did reach on an error in the first inning. The Red Sox committed both of their errors in that first. One chop foul. But the count holds it two and two. Final game of the series and the homestand tomorrow night, and it's a dandy. Chris Sale against John Lester. Chris 3 and 0, 
John Lester one and two Lester with a 257 ERA Chris is at 266. Little looper to left field Bogart's there to make the play. Connor cracks the bat. This one slicing away, but Bogart's able to hustle back for the second out. And that'll bring up Jose Abreu. Outfield playing a few steps deeper than normal. Sizemore very deep in left field. Bradley shading toward right center. And Gomes near the track in right. This is with a change up down. Fouls that off in the count evens at one and one. Bullpen's quiet. Nobody home in the White Sox pen. Daniel Webb is the last guy. That fastball fouled off to the right. And the count moves to one and two. Two outs here in the bottom of the 12th inning. Game tied at four. There is Daniel Webb in a very strong top of the 12th inning. Capuano taking a little too much time as Abreu calls and gets his timeout acknowledged by Corey Blazer. Well, here's a situation with Jose. You got two out, nobody on. It's okay to try to hit a home run. He rings him up on a fastball inside. And so we head to the top of the 13th inning, all tied at four. It'll be Bradley, Pedroia, and Bogarts for the Red Sox. Bradley's had a very quiet night. He's 0 for 5. I didn't get a chance to finish what I was going to say with Jose being a rookie coming up in a situation like that, which he's been in, not in the major leagues, but certainly down in Cuba many times. Two out, nobody on, late in the ball game. It's all right to try to hit a home run in that situation, but you'll find out over the course of experience is if you're going to try to do that, you're better off backing off the plate just a little bit and trying to hit it over the center field fence, which he has enough power to do that. Or he has enough power to hit it deep in the right center field. Now, Capuano just aced him with a good inside strikeout pitch. 
Count evens at 1 1 to Bradley, who's got excellent speed. This is with a fastball in, and the count goes to 2 and 1. Well, we got a problem here. There's no question about that. With Webb, who worked last night. Nobody else down in that pen. No, that's when you're looking for a volunteer from your yep. starters to head down there. Well, you got to have one. You got to have one. And he walked him. So good speed aboard. And the walk that's been so critical tonight, especially the leadoff walk. Once again here in the 13th, bringing up Dustin Pedroia. He doubled and scored in the first inning. Walked and scored in the ninth. Walked and scored in the 11th. So he's one for four. Well, that's the 12th walk we've issued. And it's a 4-4 tie here in the top of the 13th. Bradley with a decent lead at first base. And that fastball rides way up and into Pedroia chasing him out of there. So Bradley two for two in stolen bases this year. Bogarts is the only member of the Sox who has stolen a base tonight. He walked stole a base in the fifth inning but didn't score. That fastball misses up and away. And Tyler Flowers out to the mound. He's starting to force it a little bit. And which is understandable. In his third inning of work. After throwing one pitch and getting a win last night. Good fastball right down the middle. The count moves to two and one. This is the normal hit and run pitch for most managers. Bradley, good lead at first. He's not going. And that ball down and in. And the count moves to three and one. Well, sometimes it's not how many pitches you threw. The night before is how many suit down in that bullpen getting ready. Xander Bogarts in the on deck circle. But the big pitch from Webb. Good lead by Bradley. He's not going. And he pours a fastball upper part of the zone. And a full count on Pedroia. Outfield straight away. There he goes. Chop foul up the third baseline. So Bradley will have to go back. Then on the other side of the page, some guys can get out there and it doesn't bother them hardly at all. You get they used to call them, you don't hear the term that much anymore, rubber arms. The rubber arms. Guys can throw six, seven days in a row, but you got to train yourself to do that. And you don't see it a whole lot anymore. So once again, three and two pitch. And he goes to first base. Bradley getting a little bigger lead now. He's off. Ground ball back up the middle. Alexi drops it. Would have been a tremendous effort. But it'll go as a base hit. 
If Bradley's not running, that's through, and he's probably at third base. And it is ruled a base hit. So he takes it right back up the middle. Ramirez cannot hold on after he knocks it down. And first and second, nobody out for Xander Bogarts. One for two. He's been hit twice. He's walked twice. And he has the only stolen base of the night. Slider misses up and away. Then a game like this also puts a lot of extra pressure on tomorrow night's starters. Well, both of those guys are good enough. But they both realize now that they're going to have to go deep into the game. Yeah. Do an O count on Bogarts. That one misses way wide. Could very well be that Daniel is tiring. Yeah, he's forcing it. Yep. You can see it. Last year, it's understandable. Bogarts played 18 regular season games and 12 postseason games for the Red Sox. And the 3 0 pitch. Fastball on the inside corner. Good speed on the bases for the Red Sox. Their fastest man, Bradley, is at second. Pedroia is at first. Little chopper should be two. Flip to second for one, back to first, yes. double play. Exactly what the Sox needed. And Simeon straddling the bag. Throws Bogarts out easily. And now it'll be four wide ones to Big Poppy putting him at first base and taking their chances with Johnny Gomes. Boy, you gotta tip your cap right there to Daniel Webb being three and oh. And coming back. And coming back and throwing a double play ball. Hello. Daniel's made 50 pitches. And he's making sure to put a little something on. The intentional walk. So David Ortiz for just the second time this year walked intentionally. And that'll leave it up to Johnny Gomes who sacrificed fly in the 11th put the Red Sox on top. Well, we had our rookie first baseman walked intentionally twice in one game. Can't remember ever seeing that. No, me either. Not for a rookie. Now Tyler Flowers going out to talk with Webb. Just giving him a little breather. Gomes one for three tonight. A couple of walks and a sacrifice fly. Well, we were very fortunate on that sacrifice fly. He hit that ball really hard. 30 second of an inch more, and it's way out of here. Infield and outfield playing Gomes straight away. Good fastball for a strike. Daniel still pouring it in there at 96.
Grady Sizemore in the on deck circle. And that evens the count of one and one. A lot of pressure on Tyler Flowers here to block anything down. That's the go ahead run out at third base. Slider misses up and away. Is Daniel getting under that slider somewhat? Good fastball for a strike. And it evens the count of 2 2. Two outs here. Top of the 13th inning. Game tied at four. Runners at the corners. And Daniel Webb in his third inning of work. Did he check his swing? The appeal? Yes, he did. Yeah, he didn't go. Good call by Jim Joyce. And the count is full. Abreu behind Ortiz at first base. And Simeon up the middle. 3 2 pitch. Strike three called on a slider. Leaving him right there and getting out of the 13th inning. What a job by Daniel Webb. We head to the bottom of the 13th with the game tied at four. Webb getting out of the inning after first and second nobody out. He was able to throw a ground ball when he needed it after falling behind three and oh to Bogarts. The six four three got him one out away from getting out of the inning and then the slider on three and two freezes Johnny Gomes and it's on to the bottom of the 13th. Adam Dunn comes in to face Chris Capuano. Adam has walked a couple of times, scored a run. But he's 0 for 3. Fastball for a strike. Dunn's 462 on base percentage leading the American League in that department. That evens a count of one and one. Gomes can hardly get any deeper in right field. He's back there very close to the track. And the appeal, and Marvin Hudson said he swung. Terrible. 
to look from the side and indeed he did go a little too far. So Adam down one and two in the count. Line foul and the count holds. He got him. So Dunn goes down on strikes for the first out for the 13th. That'll bring up Jordan Danks. He walked to start the 11th, stole second base, scored on the Tyler Flowers base hit to tie it at four. Flowers coming up. 13 strikeouts for Boston pitching. Curveball misses inside. With two outs in the 11th. Tyler Flowers in his first at bat of the night took a base hit right back up the middle to tie it. And that evens the count of one and one. Big clutch hit by Tyler, especially after getting very quickly 0 and 2. And a breaking ball for a strike. And the count goes to one and two. Alejandro Diaz in the on deck circle. If he keeps it alive, Ramirez will hit. And now they're going to shift. That's a good move with two strikes. So we'll play the finale of this series today. Two and two count on Jordan Danks. Little chopper. Easily played. And Danks is the second out. That'll bring up Alejandro Diaz, who single, stole a base in the fourth inning. He's one for five. at a fastball for a strike. Alejandro, I'm sure thinking about ending this one, but he'd like a low fastball. Little looper to center field. Bradley right there to make the play. So three up, three down, and we head to the 14.
and we have a pitching change for you. Coming in for Daniel Webb, it will be Leury Garcia. Uh, bullpen has run out. So Leury Garcia will be in there. What a job. A tip of the cap, a big tip of the cap to Daniel Webb. Boy, what a job he did coming in. As we talked about, he only pitched threw one pitch last night, but he was up throwing some warm up tosses down there and then come in here, work three innings and do the job he did. Yeah, I tell you, he's, he's, he's got the stones to do it. I thought it was absolutely terrific. He didn't figure him to get out of the 13th inning, but get out of it, he did. So it's the first time he's been on the bump. And he's got Grady Sizemore. There's a look at Daniel Webb. Now what a job. What a job. Sizemore. Sacrifice fly. Back in the ninth inning. Four, five, and two for their guys. Four, nine, and oh for our guys. And this has been an unusual game in the sense of the base on balls. We walked four in the ninth. Check that four in the eighth. Two in the ninth. We have walked 13 guys tonight. They scored three of their runs without the just one hit. And get over there. Okay. Good, nice play <laughs> by Abreu. <laughs> not used to getting <laughs> no, over there not. when you're he's standing not. on the mound. No, he is not. <laughs> good play by. Good play by Jose. And Leary's standing there saying, boy, that's a good play by Jose. Oh, wait a second. I get. Nope. I'll take it myself. So here is AJ. Well, I played with a guy who actually played every position in the game. Bert Campanaris. Campy did it against Minnesota at the old Metrodome. Or, excuse me, at the old Met. And besides that, he was ambidextrous. As that ball hit hard in the right field, but we got a man there. So AJ is retired on that line shot, right field. Jordan Diggs a good outfielder. Doesn't Jordan. matter where you put him, he just coasts under the ball and goes and gets it. Well, it's hard to say that he's not the best outfielder we have because I I, I really think at this point Adam Eaton is, is the best center fielder we have. He's the best center fielder, but Jordan can play anywhere and do it terrific. So here's Daniel Nava. 0 for 5 tonight. Grounded out twice, struck out. Fight out. Yeah, but the Campy pitched left handers left handed and right handers right handed. In that one inning he did. It's pretty amazing, as is a fastball at 88 miles an hour from Leuria Garcia. And that has popped up. Stay in here. Come back. It won't. Well, I'm sure as things got a little bit more tense as they move through the inning, either Don Cooper or Robin went down the dugout and said, any of you guys ever pitch any place, anywhere, at any time? <laughs> Leary said, yep, I did. Also, it's saw Rocky Calavito, one of my teammates in Kansas City, working inning. Rocky had one of the best arms in the game. Don Cooper is yelling out at Corey Blazer. Well, Blazer's seen a lot of pitches tonight, as is Nick Pinto. Does such a great job on the pitch tracks for us. This is Port, the uh, pitch 468 coming up in this ball game. So Nava draws the walk. Fourteenth walk we have given up. Tyler probably asking him, have you ever pitched out of the stretch before? Because that's what you have to do now. 
Ramirez, Flowers, and Eaton in our half of the 14th. And here's Herrera. Jonathan has been to the plate twice, 0 for 2. He's flied out and grounded out. Takes first pitch strike. Well, he had a chance to get loose. Throwing in the cages underneath behind our dugout. Yeah, it's usually what happens. Two and one to count. Tommy Hawks it. The area using a little short arm out there. That's all he's got. Yeah. He's a short arm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he would certainly love to get out of this one. He's thrown four pitches face high to Herrera. Chances are he's not going to miss low too often being an infielder and an outfielder. And he tried to change up, so now the count goes full. So, back to back walks. Robin probably asking Don Cooper, what do you tell a second baseman when you go out and talk to him on the mound? Not sure Don has had that experience. So here's Bradley Jr. with two on, two out. In the top of the 14th and a 4 4 tie. And that one's high. It's hard to go out there and tell him, hey, we got to drop and drive here. <laughs> yeah. And the count 2 and 0. Oh. And here comes Coop. And Robin, brother. He's probably telling him, look, just try to play catch with Tyler. The only, the only thing you can really, I think, tell a guy like this when you is just slow it down a little bit. Slow it down just a little bit. He's going to be anxious with that adrenaline flowing, getting out there real quick. So just slow it, slow it down a little bit. Like that. Just like that. A little difference in that delivery than the others. So the count two and one. We threw him a change up. And he got it over. And the count three and one. So three and one, two out. And Pedroia in the on deck circle. And a full count. On the strike and hope he hits it at somebody. Get foul. That's fair. And the two walks are going to score on the double. And it's a 6 4 Boston lead. RBI six and seven for Bradley. 
Third double this year. And he took a little something off to get it over the plate. And Bradley rifles it into the corner. Just fair. And Bedoya takes strike one. He doubled and scored in the first. Count one and two. Also, if you're just getting home, yeah, we are still playing. This is the second of this three game set. We'll finish the last one tonight, later on. Chris Sale against John Lester as there's a little breaking ball. But the two walks come around to score, and we'll go to the bottom of the 14th trailing, 6 4. Well, he had it for two thirds of an inning. He retired Sizemore and Pierzynski pretty quickly. But unfortunately, the walk to Nava and Herrera set the stage for Bradley's two run double. And I'd have to believe that the young man is going to feel it tomorrow. So here we go. All right, boys. Let's get at least two. Alexei will lead it off. He'll be followed by Flowers. First pitch strike. Alexei, a two run homer. He is one for five. Two run homer extended his hitting streak to 15 games as. Alexei a little unhappy with the location of this called strike. Well, AJ didn't think it was the way he snatched it. Well, you call almost 500 pitches, you're going to miss a few. In a game that's taken well over five hours, I would hope to tell you. Yep. Two and two. We need we need some base runners. Four hundred and eighty eight pitches thrown tonight combined. I hate top buttons. Top buttons are terrible. 
And the 117th batter in this game. Those umpires have been standing out there, as you mentioned, for five oh, hours. A long time. Yeah. And a full count. Yeah, they only had one chance for a potty break. It took it a couple of, about an hour ago, I guess it was. <laughs> Ball four base hit. He swung it. A pitch well out of the zone. So here's Tyler. Tyler with that big RBI single. Back in the 11th to tie the ball game up. Takes ball one. Count two and oh. Adam Eaton on deck. That one got a piece of Corey Blazer. Worst part about this thing is that. It's not going to be tomorrow so much that gets everybody. It's going to be the day after because we have a night game tomorrow and we'll getaway day. And no off days coming up anytime soon. And there's a base hit that a boy Tyler. He checked into this one late, but right in time to pick up two hits. And that is Joe Mazza. Mike Mazza's dad picked a click. Along with. Adrian Nieto, who was two for three in this game. So that slot has four hits. And here's Adam. Adam 0 for 5. He was hit by a pitch to lead off the bottom of the first, came around to score. Help him out. Hey, Tyler, Club. This wouldn't be the time to get too adventuresome at first base. Especially when you're not going to steal. <laughs> I wouldn't think so. That's in the left field. Grady Sizemore is there for out number two. So that's the third time tonight that Adam has gone out to Sizemore. And here comes John Farrell. He's going to make a pitching change. So a good job by Chris Capuano. So another break in the action. Capuano departs and we'll be back.
picked up the loss in last night's game. He's 0-2, 771 ERA on for the sixth time. He's going to face a tying run. And Marcus Simeon, if he gets on, Connor Gillespie. With Tyler Flowers at first. Marcus, one for six. Takes first pitch strike right there. Lays off that one once again if you're just tuning in. Johnny Danks, well, he's back. He really pitched well. Six innings, one run, three hits. Those coming on the first three hitters that he faced. Close. Two balls, two strikes, two out. He can reach. Gillespie's on deck. Just got a piece of it. game later on tonight we will board our charter head on down to Texas uh, there in the wee hours of the morning and three games there then go to Detroit for a four before returning home almost dehorned him there Should do it. Bad hop, but he controls it and throws him out, and this ball game is over. So they outlast us. We give them a gift. 15 walks we had in this ball game that we gave them. They scored six, we scored four, and we'll be back. 